Rico, Jim, how's it going, guys? Welcome, welcome. Thanks once again for joining us. Uh, glad to be here. Jim, I see you've been busy doing updates to the wiki. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's get the uh, the teams pulled in. Fistful of dollars, set up board game or something. <clears throat> Sounds like the kind of thing that could result in family drama. <clears throat> yeah, the Hall of Fame players. Uh, yeah, I'd like to come up with a standard template that's you know, easy and not a whole lot of information to to deal with, but because uh, yeah, the biggest problem I think you'll find, Jim, especially since I noticed you added uh, a whole bunch more stats to your uh, all-time list, uh, season records and all-time records. Um, oh, yeah, Fistful, now I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you add all that stuff in, and then you got to keep it up to date every every season, which means at least twice a year, you'll be updating every single stat on every single page. But anyway, possibly. Um, and now the wiki's over 500 pages, so that's a, a lot of those don't need regular updating, but a lot of them do. Uh, I've yet to find an easy way to do it. There doesn't seem to be a way to import um, text or, or HTML files easily into MediaWiki. And even if you could, to link everything between the pages would be uh, another challenge. So anyway, I've looked at all those things. <clears throat> so otherwise, it would be nice to have like the HTML reports um, exportable in a custom way so you can convert them into media wiki or some type of um, online content management. Yeah, it, but now your team looks different than uh, than the the fifteen others. But that's no big deal. Just that uh, not all the stats. And that was the other thing I didn't want to be repeating stats that are easily searchable too. Okay, so everybody's imported or exported rather, except for Miami, Milwaukee, and Ohio. Uh, Washington's back. Rob has uh, reappeared, so that's uh, that's good. Um, let's check let's check the DFA report. Ohio's got one person, and they've got one day left. So boom, they're down to AAA now. I don't know what uh, what their plan was, but. That's uh, going to hold our sim up if we don't deal with that now. Uh, I think most teams are on four days, uh, four day um, series. Uh, let's see, six six games for day one. So there are <clears throat> a few a few games that are just uh, three game sets. Miami and Washington. Looks like Andy Boyle's making a uh, season debut in Washington. Boston Brawl. Oh, you know what? We'll do the Montreal Metros and Boston Brawlers. And the reason why is uh, both both pitchers starting tonight are one and one, which is always, it's always nice to see a tiebreaker. And they're very close in the standings as well, but also we have a custom stadium for Boston. So I want to see if, uh, if this one pans out. I think we're just going to do one one play-by-play -play tonight, <clears throat> but we'll get uh, we'll get we'll kick things off uh, tonight with that one. 
Saturday, we'll try to do a double header on Saturday. Um, <laughs> don't want to see Arango get shelled again. He's uh, His ERA is, is through the roof. You are playing the Salt. Um, and the Salts are 9 of 4. They're the best team right now. But uh, I'm not sure how sustainable that is. If you look at their their stats here, I mean, their pitching seems to be pretty solid for right now. Uh, but they're not producing a lot of runs. Um, they're 7th in run scored, 7th in batting average. Like 7th place in almost all the offensive stats. And then 1st, 2nd, or 3rd in all the pitching and defensive stats. So they seem to be doing okay pitching wise, but uh, how sustainable is that? Uh, especially when they're not producing offense, six home runs in the lineup, three for Hallamore, three for John Legg. And um, that's, that's just not, I don't think that's going to be enough to steam them through. So I don't expect Arango to get drilled tonight. Um, you've got Almoda in the lineup. Uh, in the rotation for game three. Game two is Dan Pratt, who seems to be off to an okay start. So Arango might give up a few. I don't know that he's going to give up that many. And then um, you've got two, three actually really good pitchers after that. So I think I think actually you'll come away with that series, to be honest with you. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, as a quick reminder, here are the standings. Peruse them while I snack some more chips. Mm-hmm. All right, Scott. Uh, sorry, I had to deal with a uh, help Addy deal with a dog emergency. Doggo uh, decided to yak all over the the floor, so she uh, she's not feeling well. She's got worms. Thought we'd uh, let everyone know that uh, she's got worms. We're, uh, we got some deworming treatment uh, for an exorbitant amount of money, <laughs> and uh, some probiotics and pills and. 
but she still refuses to not eat everything she sees. So apparently she ate something that uh, that she wasn't supposed to have. And, well, some cereal that fell on the floor. I know. I, you know what, though? I've had a lot of dogs. I've never, I don't think I've ever had one with worms. That's the thing. It's a puppy. So... And it seems like someone forgot to take her to the vet for a third deworming treatment. You better talk to Tommy. And it's not Addie. <laughs> it, uh, it is most definitely not Addie. She's a diligent uh, pet owner, uh, as I've seen since day one. So, Anyway, here's your beer me, Scott. Tonight it's uh, the James Ready again. There we go. Get in India. Tobacco and diatomaceous earth kills all worms. All right. Scott with another beer me. And a nugget of knowledge. I read on some website that uh, uh, the heck is it called? Apple cider vinegar can help too in the water. You live in a farm? I didn't know that. What kind of farm? What kind of farm? Addie's curious. She likes farms. We like farms. We've been to farms. Pigs, dogs, chicken. Oh, this is what it works for. Pigs, dogs, chickens, cats, and pigs. Wait, you said pigs, you said pigs no, already. Pig dogs. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm guessing that was the premise behind it. I didn't read the whole article, but, uh, uh, you know, because that's why they don't go in the stomach, right? They're, they're just in the intestines usually. Um, the stomach is too acidic already, but the intestines are where they live. <laughs> yes, babe, I'll help you. I'll help read for you. Uh, 46 acre farm. We have about a third acre crops. Dozen hogs, two dozen chickens. 110 acres of Christmas tree, Georgia Christmas trees. Wow. Can anyone else here read? I mean, I'm in the infantry. It's readings, a tough, tough thing. If it fits in crayon, I can read it. All right. Buy a pack of Lucky Strikes, break them over the food, let the animals eat the tobacco, it'll kill the worms. Did not know that. I wonder if natives ever did that. I don't think they domesticated a lot of animals, though. But uh, natives have a close association with, with tobacco. So, And here in Ontario, we, we grew tobacco. It's, uh, well, I don't know if, it's today, if they still grow it, but Stompin' Tom Connors... Who, uh, whose music I played for you a couple Sims ago, um, actually has a song about <clears throat> picking tobacco in uh, Tilsonburg, Ontario, which later became Heinz country that grew tomatoes down there too. Anyway, that's all nice. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, I started uh, exporting some of these um, news texts, because they, they're just text files uh, in the messages folder. I started exporting them and importing them into the blog and dressing them up again. I guess Jim's uh, activity sort of got me restarted in that, and it's it doesn't take up too much time. Just have to set the correct dates or put the, put the game date in there and, and things like that. Oh, wow. I've never even heard of it. Diatomaceous earth. Skeletons of tiny microbes. Um, borax I've used for ant control, but I don't think that's safe to eat. I think it, there's a big warning on it. Don't eat it. Huh. 
Yeah. Well, I, you know, we'll do this round the way the, the vet says, the two, 260 bucks. And then, then I'm going to eat, I'm going to start eating dearth, uh, dirt, 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 dirty earth, DE, if I start to, if I find that I've got worms, thanks to the pup. I try not to eat with where the pup poops though. <laughs> That's usually. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the worms don't come out the mouth though. I don't know. The worms come out the bum. They don't come out the mouth, but they lick themselves. What's that? They don't come out the mouth, but they lick themselves. Mm, good point. Yeah. Healthy diet of tobacco. All right. Well, you learn something new every day. I'm 46, and now I've learned something new. I didn't know. All right. Uh, where were we? Oh, I got to get... Uh, okay, so I fixed some, some things. You guys should get the Slack updates now. Um, apparently, what I had to do was... Uh, invite stats plus into each of the private channels so i did that uh what else oh yeah um i think by the weekend we're going to start uh, transitioning stats plus over to discord so if you haven't um joined discord yet so we don't have all the gms in there yet uh type discord in the slack channels in one of the main channels and it'll it'll give you the link to the discord and then we'll we'll get you in there um, because uh, Stats Plus, apparently, they're beta testing Discord um, functionality. So uh, we've I've asked to be a beta tester for the league. And, and so I've uh, been given the download link and some instructions. So we may transition to that over the weekend or shortly afterwards. Kills hornworms. Oh, you know what loves hornworms? So um, my kids have a... Uh, uh, my daughter actually wanted it. To, they have a, a leopard gecko, and uh, that thing loves hornworms. Big juicy green suckers. All right, so um, Nelson Silvio and Harland Adronic are going to face off in the Montreal Metro's Boston Brawlers game. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so if things go well, we should have our 3D uh, stadium back, Constitution Stadium. As a reminder, uh, it is actually uh, the Brawl Pit. That was the original... When I designed Constitution Stadium, I thought Boston was still playing at the Brawl Pit, so I used the Brawl Pit's measurements, and there's a big warehouse in left field that simulates the the wall, basically it's used as a wall, and then I looked at the fact that they moved to Constitution Stadium after, after I did two days of work, and I'm like, oh, so I'll just use the 3D graphics for Constitution Stadium, but the stadium... Um, Ballpark, ballpark factors are Constitution Stadium, not the Brawl Pit. Um, I see there's a missing person at the front of the lineup for Boston. I guess Cody didn't get around to that. But uh, here we go. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll just call, I'll just start it and call the game. Hmm. Interesting. I'm learning all kinds of things about farms here, Addy. If I talk to Scott enough, and I know some other farm people, then uh, I might run my own farm. You never know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll be farmers. All right, this is not the stadium. So now I'm wondering what happened. 
What happened? Oh. All right, let's take a quick. That's the classic view, eh? I've never seen this before. That's a lot of information. I want to fix this because this is junk. The uh, players aren't going to move around. Nothing will be animated. <clears throat> Give me one minute. I do have to re import. So, uh, stand by. Figure out what happened here. I didn't save after I imported, so I got to re import, then save. I did do a backup earlier today. So, at least that's done. I'm eating a snack mix and I'm leaving all the pretzels. That's a sin in some places. Addie likes pretzels though. She'll eat them. Alright, let's get the screen back up. Wait. Ho oh, ho. I haven't put it on the right. Uh, Now it doesn't want to come up. All kinds of technical issues tonight. So, how are you guys doing? Oh, there we go. It's back. There we go. Oh, and, and Ohio exported. Look at that. So that uh, that little glitch there allowed uh, Ohio to export. Dylan, did you drop in? Are you here, Dylan? Sneaky export. There you go. Well, that's good. Now we got uh, 14 of the 16 teams. You're lucky you uh, had to restart the game. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to check one thing real quick here, see why Boston's um, ballpark is not showing up. 3D model. And, well, it's showing up here, so... It's a mystery. Oh, do we get a new follower? Shiflet, thanks for the follow. I didn't hear the follow uh, tone. I didn't hear the bing, bing, bing. Okay, well, that's what the stadium is supposed to look like. Uh, I think it's a nice stadium. Um, <clears throat> we can still play the game, but uh, I'm, I'm just curious as to why it's not showing up. Look, at, it's a gorgeous stadium. I... I didn't do full grandstand because uh, it gets in the way of the um, of the camera. 
and the white lines are appearing as gray. And I think that's probably because I uh, didn't colorize them white. Yeah, this is supposed to be the Charles River off in right field um, with a little bit of a hanging bleacher over there. And I can't remember what's that. Is that a light stand? Ladder? I can't remember what that is. Um, <clears throat> and of course, the good old stars and stripes in the middle with a fenced in area for, I think that's like supposed to be uh, like just some cheap seats behind a fence. I can't remember now. Uh, there's the, uh, the, the pitcher's eye with a little odd little grass spot there, a Geico sign. Cause, uh, well, gotta have, gotta have a Geico sign. It's Boston. And then, um, this is the right field wall, which is a big heckin, uh, warehouse, wharf side warehouse on the Charles river. So actually it's not that new, Ben. Um, just that we haven't seen it because when we upgraded it to OOTP 21, I didn't port over any of the stadiums. So that's a little media area. And of course the, uh, I didn't put them in there, but the, the dugouts would be back here somewhere. So it is, it is an interesting and quirky stadium. It was supposed to be the brawl pit, uh, when I designed it. And then I realized that, uh, I already moved Boston to constitution park and it was going to have a different theme. In fact, I was going to put the USS constitution in the background, but anyway, uh, apparently and then I did two days of work on this and didn't feel like changing anything. So anyway, but it didn't work. Uh, so, um, do, 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 do. and if, if we load that again, I have a feeling this is going to show that weird default stadium that it showed before. Um, go back to the schedule here. Well, I was playing Minneapolis. Have we done in Ohio? We've done Minneapolis. Well, thanks for the beer, me, babe. I'm playing the Dragons. Chicago's playing Milwaukee. Houston, Calgary. We've done a Calgary game. Hold on. Let me just uh, see what uh, what the schedule's been looking like. This is why I started logging all this stuff in the wiki because I, I don't even remember <clears throat> who featured in which broadcasts. Okay, so last broadcast was Arizona at Nevada. So it was a Metro League uh, matchup. So we should do a Lake League matchup. And there's three on the schedule. So yeah, Montreal, Boston, Toronto, New York, and uh, Chicago, Milwaukee. We just did New York. Um, on Valentine's Day, and we did Toronto before that. Montreal, Boston. We did Montreal at the beginning of the season. We haven't done a Boston game yet. All right, so I wonder why the stadium's not loading. Um, if we can get the darn stadium to load, then we'll do it. This is the this is the stadium with loading. So if you're doing the 3D model, what the, well, it should, it should be this. Copy cameras from park. Um, actually, let's see if we can get a home plate view this way. Ah. Uh,
Okay, I don't know if this will work, but let's try it. Sorry for the delay, everyone. Um, if it doesn't cough up a 3D stadium here, then I don't know. On our 3D view. All right, well, let's... Let's see if it does it. Cross your fingers. Who do you like can win this game? The game told me you want a sharky. Hey, look at that. All right, it's a little bit wonky. Do we have another camera view? Um, oh, oh, it's all going to be home plate camera. All right, well, that's fine. We can live with that. I think we can live with a home plate camera. Yeah, they're uh, shatterproof plastic, from what I understand. Those windows can't be they're unbreakable. Okay. So uh, Orlando Garza, yeah, so this is going to be a bit of a headache because there, there will only be this one view, so we may not see some of the the, lo the balls into the corners and stuff. I, I, it depends if it pans around or not. But uh, here we go. Corazon, Mezias catching Harland, Adronic on the mound. Orlando Garza leading off for the Metros. And, uh, well, let's get this game rolling. This was supposed to be the pitch view, and then the uh, we were supposed to have another camera view. I think that was the problem. It didn't have an actual camera view, and that's why I couldn't load the stadium. And now it has one, the one we just did, and that's why I can't, uh, I can only do this one. Ground ball to short. Akbar stretches for it, but can't get a grip on it. No throw. Garza picks up a hit. Hydronic checks on the runner at first full count. There goes the runner and ground ball to short. They're going to go to first with it. Southcott's erased. Garza checks into second. Price Sims at the plate now. Here's the pitch. And a dribbler in front of the mound. Mezias goes to first with it. Makes the play two away. Garza goes to third. Here's John Dyke. And an inside pitch ball four. He'll trot on down to first base. A lot of empty seats there. That was the other problem. Is, uh, the 3D graphics I was using, the, the the full seats didn't look that great, and the game's supposed to be able to populate seats, but yeah, didn't, it didn't. It never really works out the way you think. Evandro Sarigo at the plate with runners in the corners, first and third, two away. Here's the pitch from Adronic. A bouncer down a third throw. Uh, did they go home? They went home to get it. No, they went to first to get it. Uh, the force play at first. This is why I like the wider view better. You can see where the ball is. Uh, anyway, three away. Montreal scoreless in the first. Boston up now. Dale Hansen leading off for the Brawlers. An interesting choice for a leadoff. With Boston missing that position originally... Who else did they have? They had, uh, let's see, Brian Bonner would have been a good option. Uh, he's got a bit of power, I think his, and he's got tons of speed. Uh, he probably would have been a better option than uh, Dale Hansen, especially because Bonner plays outfield as well and could have played center field. But Hansen batting 188 after five games, 16 at-bats, just three hits, but one of them is a home run. Let's see how he fares here against Nelson Silvio. Bless you. One, two count. Swing and a miss. Strike three. One down. Here's Jonathan Gonzalez. Two, two pitch from Silvio. Goes to right field. It drops in for a base hit. Catching it on the slide is John Dyke. Keeps it from 
go into the wall. And now Gonzalez at first. Jesus Cardenas up to the plate. And he launches one to the alleyway and right. It bounces off the wall. Extra bases for sure. Gonzalez rounding third. Comes home easily. Cardenas with an RBI triple has made it one nothing for the Brawlers. One out. Sirio Damara is at the plate. A bouncer down to first base. Retrieved by Sirigo and he trots the bag for out number two. And here's Ray James. The redhead Ray. Red beard and everything. The DH hitting 319 so far this season. He rolls this one back to the mound. Silvio has an easy grip on it and throws to first for out number three. So Boston strands one, but they score a run. It is one nothing as we go to the top of the second. We'll check the out-of-town scores. I'll be right back. Check out these scores. All right, back uh, in the broadcast booth. Toronto leading New York 2-0 in the top of the second. Miami and Washington all tied up at uh, two apiece. It's uh, one one hit per team, so I wonder how that's worked out. Home, two run home runs. Uh, the walk, maybe? Anyway, um, the other game's scheduled to start later. Chicago is in Milwaukee, California and Arizona. Seattle is in Nevada. Back to the game action here in Constitution Stadium where only one camera crew showed up to broadcast today's game. So this is the only, the only camera view we have today. Chris Letary at the plate to uh, lead the second off against Harland Adronic. Adronic 1-1 one one this season. He's done 11 innings including the first inning of this game. Allowed just one hit. Today, 13 on the season. As Letary grounds the second for out number one. Dickie Doyle at the plate. I believe this is a former Ohio player, uh, is he not? Oh, no, he's formerly in my organization. Uh, that's right, we, we got rid of him. Why did we get rid of him? Oh, because he hit 187 at AAA. Uh, he's doing only marginally better, 237, uh, so far after 12 games with Montreal. Adronic with the pitch and hits him. So he'll trot down to first base with a, uh, a free bag. Doyle at first with some speed. Tom Carroll to plate, one away. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swatted to left field and retrieved by Gonzalez. Fly ball. Legacy. Hello, Legacy. How are you? Welcome, welcome. 3-2 pitch. To Shugo Morimoto, who draw, drives it back to the wall under the Geico sign. And Doyle rounds second, rounds third, comes home to score. It's an RBI double for Morimoto to even the game up at one apiece. 
Legacy, you're just joining us. Uh, this is a uh, Montreal-Boston game. This is our custom stadium uh, for Boston I did uh, last year, the year before that. Uh, but uh, I didn't fix the camera views, so there's only one camera, and this is it. Uh, you you got to have the stars and stripes in a stadium uh, called Constitution Stadium. But the funny part is I actually uh, originally designed this after the measurements for the brawl pit. And it has the uh, the big warehouse in left field like the brawl pit was intended to have. A high high uh, wall in left field. Anyway. 0-1 count to Orlando Garza has returned to the top of the <coughs> order. Ground ball to third. Demarez tosses it to first for the out. But the game is tied up at one apiece as we go to the bottom of the second. Sammy Adams, of course, it's Boston, so you got to have a Sammy Adams ad up there, too. Todd Akber uh, steps up to the plate for Boston. The shortstop hitting 310 this season. Drafted first uh, round of 2021. No, yeah, no fans. It's COVID. Yeah, I couldn't really, I mean, I could have used a uh, um, a graphic that, uh, that that put fake fake fans in the seat, but... This will be how baseball is for years, unfortunately. The way they're going. Strike three pitch to Todd Akber. Silvio sends down his second batter on strikes tonight. Hammering away at the zone, too. Not afraid to uh, go down the middle. Francisco Villarreal now. Acquired by a trade with California back in 2021. Launches a uh, ball into center field. It drops in for a base hit as Garza retrieves it, throws it back in, and Villarreal is safe at first. Mickey Pepin, the next batter. Slices this one off to short, and they go around the horn for two. Pepin grounds into a double play to end the second for Boston, and we go to the third, tied at one apiece. Peter Southcott up to the plate now, the left fielder for Montreal. Tied for the team lead in home runs, tied with Phil Sims, who hits right after him in the order tonight. Here's the 1 2 pitch from Adronic. Hammered hard into the left field corner, bounces off the wall of the warehouse. Retrieved by Gonzalez, throws it into shortstop Todd Akber. But Southcott with a double to start things off here in the third. Price Sims at the plate now. And he slices this one off to left field. It's up in the air high. Retrieved by Gonzalez. No opportunity for Southcott to tag up. One away for John Dyke. 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Adronic. His first tonight. That'll bring up Evandro Cerigo, who hits a hard one to left. It's back to the track. It's way up there, but caught right on the track by Gonzalez. That looked like it uh, had a fair chance of bouncing off the wall, too. But it did not, and uh, that is out number three. We go to the bottom of the third. Boston up again. They're going to try and break this deadlock. Corazon Mezias up first, and then he'll be followed by Hansen and Gonzalez at the top of the order. 2-2 pitch from Silvio. Swing and a miss. Slider gets him on the inside portion of the plate, even uh, off the plate slightly. Silvio pretty good at painting the black. Dale Hansen up now. 1-0 count. Hammers this one to left. Southcott has to step back to the track, but he's there to get it. And that'll bring up Jonathan Gonzalez. 3-2 count. Swing and a miss. And that is the inning. Top of the fourth. Still tied up at one apiece. We'll check the out-of-town scores once again. And uh, Toronto leading New York 3-0 now. They're going into the fourth. Game just underway in Milwaukee where they're hosting Chicago. Just one out with a runner at first uh, for the Pitbulls. 
Washington leading Miami 3-2 in the bottom of the third. And the last two games getting underway slightly later. Makanakwamano, so far one of the top performers today, 2 for 2 at the plate with a double and an RBI. The Candyman. Legacy with the Beer Me. Thank you. Chris Letary back up to the plate. The catcher 0 for 1 today. Uh, playing uh, not, not his first game, maybe his third game. Uh, it looks like uh, Metro is going with their backup catcher tonight. Only 8 at bats. 1-1 one, one count from Adronic. Popped up way high in the air to shallow center. Charging in as Hansen makes the grab. And now it's uh, Dickie Doyle with one out. Adronic winds, delivers, grounder to short. Akbar has it, throws the first two down. Here's Tom Carroll. And the right-hander slices this one off to right field. Ranging over is Villarreal to make the catch, and it's a three-up, three-down inning for the Montreal Metros. We're all tied up at one still, going to the bottom of the fourth. Jesus Cardenas now uh, up to the plate for the Brawlers. Slotted in at third in the batting order. He's hitting 317 this season so far. No home runs, five RBIs, a pair of stolen bases. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss on the inside fastball. High and inside, get the chin music. Not sure why he was cutting on that one. Perhaps because he's got a terrible eye. Jesus Cardenas at the plate now. Or sorry, uh, Sirio Demaris at the plate now. Uh, Cardenas just struck out. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Hammered right past a diving first baseman of Andrew Sirigo into right field for a base hit. Improves his average to 378. I'm pretty sure it's a team lead right there. Ray James next. Did I not beer you already? Like I see here, I'll give you an, I'll give you a, a slow, solid beer me, just so you don't miss it. All right, Ray James at the plate. Sends this one on the ground to short, and it's a double play. That's the second time the Brawlers have grounded into a double play tonight. Team's very close in scoring and uh, in hits. Boston 4-3 over Montreal in hits, but the game is tied at one run each. Shugo Morimoto at the plate had one of those hits for Montreal. Uh, along with one of the, uh, along with the RBI that scored their only run. He's been on a bit of a hot streak. He's leading the team in batting. Flies out to center field here as Hansen ranges over to catch it. Just in front of the Geico sign. And now it's back to Orlando Garza, his third time around. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He goes down to an 84 mile an hour cutter. Low and outside. Here's Peter Southcott back up again for a third time. The 1-0 count. Hydronic winds, delivers. A bit of a flaring ball into center field just over the head of second baseman Nicky Pepin. Into shallow center. Hansen retrieves it easily. So South caught at first with two out. Here's Price Sims. <clears throat> Sims are, is hitting sub 200 so far, but he does have the trio of home runs for the Metros and leads the lineup in RBIs. I suspect he's the team leader in RBIs with 10. Just a 1 2 pitch ground ball to third. They get the force at second. That's all they need to end the inning. Montreal. Bless you. Goes down and leaves a, a runner on base. Bless you.
Well, I guess technically not because he's, there was a runner that was that was out. Bottom of the fifth, Boston up again. Todd Akber, the shortstop, for his second time around. Boston not making it around through the order as quite as often as Montreal has been. But Akber, with a single to right field, has parked himself at first base. Francisco Villarreal now, after the Akber leadoff single. Here's the 1-0 count. Squares the bunt. It's right out in front of the plate. They're going to go to first to get Villarreal. A perfect sack bunt. And Akbar goes to second. One out. Mickey Pepin now. Rain starting to fall here. So I have a feeling this will be a quick rain out. Or a quick uh, rain delay. Mickey Pepin at the plate. Because I've turned him off. Ground ball to first. Silvery over to uh, the bag to cover the cover it, and uh, the toss gets him. Akber goes to third on the out. Corazon Mezias now. Here's the one-two pitch, and a grounder to second. Morimoto retrieves it, throws the first, and that is the end of the inning. Top of the sixth, still knotted at one apiece. A great pitching matchup here. Both pitchers uh, pitching their hearts out. And the scores from around the league. Toronto leading uh, New York 5-2 going into the fifth inning. Still scoreless in Milwaukee where they're hosting Chicago. They're going into the third. Uh, so no uh, early, uh, early game uh, burst of runs for Chicago yet. The Freedom and the Storm are tied at four apiece. Four hits as well. And uh, the other two games uh, getting underway after 9 p.m. John Dyke at the plate. Adronic pitches to him on a 2-2 cutter. Grounded to third. Throw to first and that's one away. Here's Evandro Cerigo, number 98. A full count. Takes this one down to first base. A slow roller played easily by Cardenas. And that's Cerigo retired. Chris Letary now with two out. Launches a high fly ball to shallow left. Gonzalez retrieves that one easily. And that is... The end of the inning. Bottom of the sixth. Game still tied. 1-1. Dale Hansen now as we return to the top of the Brawlers order. The left-handed batting center fielder 0 for 2 tonight. Here's the 1-0 count. Sends this one on the ground past Doyle at short and rolls into center field. Garza has it to fairly quickly. Hansen's going to get the base. But just one. Here's Jonathan Gonzalez now. And the rain has delayed the game. We'll see, uh, let's see, just a 27-minute rain delay. It's the quickest 27 minutes I've ever had on a broadcast. We'll resume the game here. 1-0 count to Gonzalez. Hansen at first, no outs. High fly ball to right field. Chasing it down is John Dyke, who makes the catch towards the alley. Hansen has to stay put. <clears throat> Jesus Cardenas now. And then he drops one into the corner in right field. It's uh, retrieved by John Dyke, but it's going to be a double for Cardenas. Hansen moves to third. And now with one out, Boston has an opportunity with two runners in scoring position. Siru Damares, their home run hitter at the plate and a team batting leader. Grounds to second. The throw to first easily handled. Hansen stays put at third. Now there's two outs. Ray James at the plate. An average player, if uh, if ever there was, there was one, 
So far this season at home, he's only hitting 042. Do we have a bingo? Um, but he's been doing really well on the road. So uh, I'm going to guess 14 hits on the road, one at home. 2 0 count. Silvio winds, delivers. Hard grounder to short, but it's uh, right to Doyle, who throws the first, and that ends the inning. Two runners stranded for Boston as they come close, but can't break this deadlock. We go to the seventh, still tied up at one apiece. Corazon Mizias now. Or sorry, uh, he's the catcher. Dickie Doyle now. 0 2 count from Adronic. Ground ball to second. Pepin has it and throws the first. Gets him. Pepin with uh, some pretty nifty glove work there at second base. And now it's Tom Carroll at the plate. 1 0 count. Drops one into the glove of Todd Ackbar at short. Didn't have to go far. Two down. Shugo Morimoto now, who's one for two tonight with a ribby. The only uh, RBI for Montreal. And he draws a walk here on the 3-2 cutter. Orlando Garza with one on, two out. And he lines out to third baseman Damares, and that ends the top of the seventh. It is seventh inning stretch time as we wait for Boston to take the plate. I don't know. I don't care if we ever come back. Root, root, root for the home team. All right. Pretzel time. Here's Todd Akper. Boston's shortstop. A 1-1 count from Silvio. Both starting pitchers still in the game here in the seventh. Ground ball to Sirigo. Takes it to the bag for out number one. Villarreal who had a hit earlier today. One of the seven for Boston. But the Brawlers unable to convert on many of those hits. They just have one run to tie this ball game. Slices one down the first baseline. Villarreal uh, sends that one into right field. He's going to go for two. He's in. Villarreal with a double, a stand-up double. It looked like the ball came in fairly quickly, but Morimoto didn't get a throw to, to Doyle covering the bag. So one out, and Boston yet again in a scoring position with Mickey Pepin at the plate. Here's the 0-2 count. Hard hit, ground ball, but uh, Morimoto's over to grab it. Throws to second, and can't, oh, he can't get a throw off. Pepin with an infield hit has moved Villarreal to third. One away, and runners at first and third. Corazon Mezias now. Bounces one just past Morimoto's outstretched arm, and that's going to have the go-ahead run coming in as Villarreal scores. Garza fires the ball to third to get Mickey Pepin. And, oh, somebody's coming out of the ball game there. Let me just check the, uh, scroll back here if I can. It might, uh, yeah, that's what I thought it was going to do. Mickey Pepin injured. Sliding into third. Uh, no, he's still in. Uh, Jeremy Lovett, the third baseman, was injured. He's going to come in uh, to play sh uh, third base. There's two out on the board. Mezius at second. Dale Hansen at the plate. It was Pepin who scored. No, was it Pepin or Villarreal? One of them scored. Oh, boy. And it is 2-1 uh, Boston here in the seventh. We're going to do the scoreboard in one out anyway. But I'll check it for you right now. Still no scoring in Milwaukee, where Chicago's in town. 
California now leading Arizona 1-0. It's the top of the third. 6-6 in New York, where Toronto's in town. Toronto did have the lead, but uh, New York's crawling back. Or were we trailing? Looks like uh, Toronto was the last team to score. And Washington now ahead of Miami, 5-4. Uh, they're in the top of the seventh. Dale Hansen. Here's the pitch from Silvio. A slow roller in front of the plate. Letary throws the first. Gets the out, and that ends the inning. But Boston up 2-1 now after the seventh inning is complete. And we go to the top of the eighth. I wasn't going to eat these pretzels, but now I'm eating these pretzels. Would you like a pretzel? Are you sure? Peter South caught at the plate. Grounds to first. Eve Bernard over to first to cover the bag. He gets the out. And I didn't see that Yves Bernard came in in the last inning. So he starts the 8th after having completed the 7th. Price Sims at the plate. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Strike 3 pitch. Bernard fans his first batter of the night. And it was Price Sims. Here's John Dyke now. 2 away. No on. Montreal trailing by a run. And it's a fly ball to left, diving, uh, sliding on his knees for it. it. Was Gonzalez didn't get there in time? He grabbed it on the hop. Bounced off the grass into his glove. And Dyke is safe at first. Here's Evandro Sirigo. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And it's still 2 1 for the Brawlers. After seven and a half innings, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Boston up again with that one run lead. I'll check the scores one more time. Still 6 6 in New York, where Toronto's in town. Batting is Palangan. Dawson on the mound, just one away. Washington still up on Miami, 5-4 in the top of the seventh. Arizona, California going into the fourth with the visitors, the California titles, leading 1-0. Jonathan Gonzalez batting against Silvio. Hard hit. Uh, grounder just at a reach past Shugamuramoto and hopping into center field. Garza throws it back in. So Gonzalez at first with a leadoff single. Here's Jesus Cardenas, who's two for three tonight for Boston. He puts this one on the ground to Morimoto and the throw over to Doyle, covering second, gets Gonzalez. Cardenia safe at first on a fielder's choice. Ciro Damar is now with one away. There's a full count down the first baseline, but uh, right into the glove of Cerigo, who throws it to Silvio, covering the bag. He was off balance and couldn't run to the bag himself, I'm guessing. Damar is with an infield hit, though. He beat the throw. One out, two on for Ray James, who's 0 for 3 tonight but hitting over 500 against lefties. And there's a steal attempt from Cardenas. He's out at third. And around the same time, Miguel Murillo is going to come into a uh, pitch. Ray James, still uh, a 500 hitter against lefties. So it's curious that uh, Murillo is going to come in to face um, James. Here's a 1-2 pitch. Two out, by the way. But it's a Bach. Murillo, his first uh, batter faced, has balked on his fourth pitch attempt. And Damaras moves to second. 
full count now to James. Swing and a miss, strike three, and that's going to end the inning. Boston strands one, but they still lead two to one as we go to the ninth. Montreal has one last frame to try to uh, even up or take a lead. Jason Kronk on the mound for Boston is going to try to stop them. Jose Ramirez pinch hitting for the Montreal Metros. He's only hitting 250 this season. But Ramirez with a remarkable um, history of clutch plays and even some uh, 300 plus 300 uh, seasons for Montreal. Probably a key guy to have in the, the uh, game right now. Here's the 1-0 count. Swung on. High fly ball. Deep drive to right. It's gone. Two run home run. Sorry, solo home run for Montreal. A huge hit that just tied the ball game. Dickie Doyle up to the plate. Ramirez triumphant with that solo shot over the right field fence towards the Charles River. And there's a 1-1 pitch from Kronk who just gave up the tying run. Ground ball is short. Akbar throws the first and they get him. One away. Jeremy Lovett at the plate. Full count. He slams this one up the middle. And it bounces into center field where Hansen has it. Throw back in, but the, uh, the hitter, uh, Lovett, safe at first. Shugo Morimoto now. Kronk, that sidearm. Sends a pitch in, but uh, Morimoto slices it through the left side. It splits the D and into left field. Gonzalez tosses it to third to head off Lovett. Runners at first and second with one away. Here's Orlando Garza, who has a hit tonight. Big hit to left field. It bounces in front of Gonzalez for a base hit. And now base is loaded with one out. Infield shifted right, but playing close. If you look at the lineup, there's only two fielders uh, on the left side of second base. Uh, Dale Hansen lined up with second base. All the rest are to the right for the batter. Peter Southcott, not a particularly uh, known pull hitter. There's a 2-1 count. And indeed, it's sliced over the fence, off the fence, in center field, rather. And it is a an RBI double that sends Lovett home and Morimoto. So a uh, two-RBI double. Garza moves to third, Southcott to second. And all of a sudden, it's 4-2 for Montreal. Splits the D. I have to get another beer in order to answer your beer me, which you spent your hard-earned sunflower seeds on. They're going to pitch out to Price Sims, who is hitless tonight, but has a uh, game-changing power potential and three home runs this season. Boston wants to get to John Dyke, but he is the team leader in hitting right now and also a power hitter himself. So now the bases are loaded. This is a risky play. I know they're trying to set up the force at second, but now the right-hander Jason Kronk pitching to John Dyke, who's been hitting 538 late in the game uh, in the 7th, 8th, and ninth innings. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Slices this one off to right field. It is caught, but quickly thrown in by Villarreal, but he can't get there in time. Garza scores the fifth run. And this is a huge inning for Montreal. Boston's um, train has just gone way off the rails here. Uh, this pitching battle 
was uh, was great up until the eighth inning. Now the fourth, Mont- Montreal is just walking over Boston. Vandra Sarigo now, full count, two away. Runners at first and second, swing and a miss. Lenny Briscoe had to come in to finish off this inning and stem the tide of runs for Montreal. But a three-run lead for the Metros, and Boston is in trouble. Miguel Murillo still pitching for the Metros. Todd Akber up to the plate for Boston. Yeah, a four-run ninth inning. What a uh, comeback for Montreal. Full count. Akber with a huge fly ball to right. Ranging over to grab that one is Dyke just shallow of the track. One out. And here's Francisco Villarreal. Here's the 0-2 count. Swing and a miss on an inside sinker. Second strikeout of the game for Murillo. Who's now doubled his season strikeouts to four. Mickey Pepin now a two away. 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. And it's a walk. We're going to see this inning extended at least one more batter and it's going to be Corazon Mezias up to the plate who's hitting 172 but he has a base hit tonight here's a 1-1 count makes contact but it's uh, on the ground towards first Sirigo charges in grabs it takes it to the bag and that is the game 5-2 is the final as Montreal disposes of Boston in the series opener the first time these two teams are facing each other this season uh, so what a uh, turn of events here in the ninth inning. Uh, it was Boston's game uh, after the seventh when they took the lead 2-1. to one. Uh, But the Metros weren't going to stay down long. They burst out with four runs in the top of the ninth and took the game. <clears throat> uh, the win goes to Murillo and the loss and the blown save goes to Jason Kronk, who uh, as a closer, 23-year-old closer for the Brawlers, uh, still needs to uh, uh, hone his uh, pitches and his experience uh, somewhat uh, to uh, claim the the closer title. That was a, a brutal close attempt by Kronk, who in just uh, a short period of time gave up five hits, four earned runs, including a home run, uh, along with the walk, and could not strike out a single batter. So essentially throwing away an, an excellent game by Adronic. Uh, who pitched six and two-thirds innings, uh, only allowed four hits, one earned run, two walks, two strikeouts. Harland Adronic was named player of the game for his uh, effort. He had a fine effort. Uh, Silvio, on the other hand, uh, for Montreal, pitched longer but allowed more hits. Um, So not quite uh, as, and two runs, not quite as solid effort. Adronic definitely had a, a wasted effort in tonight's game. Tom Carroll was injured at a collision at the base. The third baseman is out with a sprained elbow for six weeks, uh, according to team uh, doctors. We'll check the other finals around the league for day one of our four-day sim. <clears throat> and I want to check uh, live uh, the um, Slack channels to make, make sure the, uh, the messages are coming in. And it looks like they are. So you should be getting the game messages now once again in your... Uh, uh, team channels. I got mine anyway. Okay, so uh, we saw the Metro's Brawlers game. 5-2 is the final there. 12-9 Nomads over the Dragons. And uh, again, a six-run six ninth inning. A huge uh, burst of, of runs in the ninth inning. Um, Toronto had been trailing 9-6. Uh, to uh, six. And uh, they doubled, Toronto doubled their score to 12, uh, took, the, took the lead and won the game. Chicago Pitbulls with a 5-1 win over the Hops. All of the scoring late in the game there as well. All five runs uh, scored for the Pitbulls from the uh, seventh and beyond. And the Hops only answering with one run in the ninth. In the uh, Metro League, California titles, 5-1 winners of the Cowboys. The Storm down the Freedom, 9-5. And the Speeders take down the high-flying Seattle Salts, 6-4 Arango, with his first win of the season, uh, backed by two runs by two home runs by Tak Kyung Yang, 
and one from Cletus Avery, his uh, sixth of the season. A lot of home runs coming out of that uh, Nevada lineup. All right, we're going to quick sim through uh, game two. So we're going to look at uh, Tuesday, April 16th games. And here's our scores for this game, uh, for this day. Metro's over the Brawlers, evening up 7-4. to four. Actually, no, they, they won the first one, so it's, they've t they're now ahead in the series 2-0. Uh, the Nomads drop one of the Dragons. That series is just uh, tied up at one apiece. The Hops down the Pitbulls 6-2 tying that series the oxen playing a first game against the ravens of a three game set 12 seven winners as uh lu gets his uh, second win of the season Ju -Ju -Lu. in the metro league calgary inferno double up on the oilers 6-3 uh, for a seventh win uh, and uh, corny mays was named player of the game there had a home run for calgary kishimoto as well Miami Storm edging out the Freedom 5-4. Uh, titles down the Cowboys 7-3. And it's 4-2 for the Speeders uh, over the Salts as they take uh, the second game of the series. The four-game set. Move to uh, Wednesday, April 17th. By the way, uh, I think it's April 24th or 25th. The uh, draft pool will be announced. Uh, most of the college leagues should be wrapped up by then. I think NCAA is in playoffs, but everyone else is pretty much done. I just added a few more uh, players to my scouts task list today. Hopefully get those scouting reports back soon. Brawlers down the Metro's 5-1. They finally come up with a win in this series, uh, so they will not be swept. Uh, their goal now is to tie it. I think it's a four-game set, so they need to, to one more to tie. The Nomads uh, in extra innings over the Dragons, 7-6. They take the series lead there. Uh, the Hops down the Pitbulls, 5-4. And the Ravens down the Oxen, 6-3. So that uh, series all tied up at one apiece as well. Freedom edge out the storm, 3-2. The Oilers even up with the uh, Inferno, 6-1. Uh, Ron Alder was on the mound for Houston. He picked up his third win of the season. Troy Catley, unfortunately, has uh, yet to win a game. Uh, he is 0-3. California titles drop one to the Cowboys, 6-1. And the Nevada Speeders finally lose one to the Salts. Uh, that series... Uh, now won't be a sweep. Assaults uh, pick up their first win against the Speeders this season. And we'll play the Thursday game and finish on Friday. Just six games in action today. Oh, it looks like uh, Keeley Seal was injured for Toronto pitching. Steve Rollins as well. Danny Sanchez injured in a collision at base. Oh, a lot of injuries. Joseph Walker, Shuga Morimoto. Injuries, injuries, injuries. It's it's April. The rust is showing. Metro's dispatch the Brawlers 7-1. That gives them a series win of 3-1. The Nomads edge the Dragons 11-10. I think that's a series win for uh, me as well. The Pitbulls blank the Hops 3-0. Uh, I believe that's a series tie. We'll double check that. Cowboys uh, take down the titles 9-6. And uh, Miami Storm take it to extra innings with a 5-2 win over the Washington Freedom. 
the last game there, Salts 6-1 over the Speeders, who fall to 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, But I think that's another series split. All right, good stuff, Danny. Dalton injured. Uh, I think that's another one of my pitchers. And Francisco Aguilar. So the injuries keep coming for Toronto. All right, so the standings look like this now. Um, Toronto Nomads, 10-7, tied for uh, first with Montreal in the uh, LL East. Boston and New York uh, tied for second, uh, behind them two and a half games. Ohio Oxen on top of the West still. Chicago Pitbulls just a half game behind. They have one more loss. Uh, nine and seven is their record. The Oxen at nine and six. The Hops and the Ravens uh, filling out the rest of the division. Not far behind the Ravens, uh, five and nine. That's a, a dreadful start for them. Uh, we expect that'll be t that'll be turned around probably in not too much uh, time. Over in the Metro League, the Oilers in charge of the ML East, nine and five is their record. Just uh, two and a half games behind them are, are the uh, Calgary Inferno, who are seven and eight. Miami Storm are seven and ten, and the Washington Freedom uh, six and ten. Seattle Salt still the best team in baseball right now. Eleven and six is their record. They are on a two-game win streak after I believe that was a series split. Do -do. Check the the schedule. Uh, yeah, they split their series with Nevada. Uh, Nevada is in third place with an eight and eight record, two and a half behind the Salts. Arizona is in the middle, nine and seven. And the title is rounding out the division in last place, 7-10. and 10. Uh, But again, it's early days. Uh, we're only two weeks into the season, just starting week three. Check the news reports before we move on. I know there's a whole heck and a lot of injuries. Ron Alder notches his 150th uh, career win. Uh, and he is not far behind. He actually may surpass... Um, Ricky Rodriguez this season. Ricky is not regularly starting. Ron Alder is. So Ron Alder uh, could actually break that record and surpass Ricky Rodriguez, who only just set a record uh, a couple days ago. Uh, do, 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 do. Rodriguez, uh, Rick, Ricardo Rodriguez of the Oilers has extended a hit streak to 20 games. And Tiozo Kondo is signed with the Arizona Cowboys, uh, a one-year $5.7 million deal. That's significantly cheaper than I think he was asking at the beginning of, uh, of the year before the season started. He was the top available uh, free agent, but he's uh, now signed for one year uh, to the Cowboys. So we'll expect to see him in, in the uh, rotation very shortly. Do, 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 do. And uh, a puff piece about uh, Earl McPherson for the Metros. Uh, Danny Sanchez of the Speeders could be out for six to seven weeks. And well, he is out for six to seven weeks after suffering a hamstring injury uh, against the Seattle Salts uh, as a result of a collision at base. So no other serious uh, injuries, it looks like. Nothing that's made the news. And uh, that's about it. So um, let's check the homepage for a sec. Yeah, draft pool announcement is April 24th. So that's uh, five game days. After the uh, draft pool announcement, there's, uh, well, you can trade draft picks, but they will be for the 2022 draft. Um, we did have a vote. We did allow, uh, continue to allow draft pick trading. But just as a reminder, if you trade a draft pick after the 24th, it will be applied uh, to the 2022 draft, not this this season's draft, uh, because the draft uh, draft order becomes final on April 24th when the draft pool is announced, and that's really the fairest way when you think about it. Um, instead of having uh, um, reasons to to leverage draft picks, um, trade draft picks after the pool announcement, because you you think you're going to get a, a particular guy in the pool. Uh, so it's just, it'll influence draft picks negatively, draft pick trading negatively. And so we're going to leave it uh, the way 
um, uh, the way the game suggests, which is uh, draft pool is when the um, draft picks are finalized. All right. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us tonight on a Thursday night. Uh, I know we weren't going to sim, but we did. So that's good. It's always nice to get another um, stream in there. Well, we were going to sim, uh, just a matter of streaming. So we did get the stream in. Uh, we'll be back uh, once again Saturday night. Uh, so don't forget to set your alarm and uh, come join us. 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, what's that? 9 p.m. Central, 7 uh, Pacific, something like that. Um, 6.30, uh, no, 10.30 uh, Newfie time. Is that it? 11.30 Newfie time, 10, 10 p.m. Atlantic time, 10.30 Newfie time. They're always half an hour ahead of Atlantic. All right. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys then, and I'll get the league file up uh, shortly. So uh, you should see a notification in Slack about that. Thanks again, and uh, see you Saturday. Oh, wait. How many people we have here? Seven. Should we look at maybe doing a raid? Uh, who... Who's doing what right now? Oh, Spore is back doing baseball. We haven't uh, raided Spore in a while. <clears throat> um, well, thanks, Legacy. Yeah, Paul Spore, who is a uh, he's a baseball writer and stat head, is uh, back doing MLB The Show 20. So I wonder if he's going to do... You can ask him if he's going to do MLB The Show 21. But uh, go go give him a watch for a little while. Say hi from us. And uh, we'll see you guys Saturday night. <clears throat> you do need to follow to chat with him. So you gotta, or subscribe. All right. Uh, see you then, guys.